Hello world, welcome to Cyberpreet and today in this video we are going to discuss the variance and standard deviation. These are also some of the important topics in machine learning as well as in statistics. And in the previous video we have already seen uh, what is mean and if you haven't watched that mean median mode video, I will highly recommend you to go through that video because some of the topics that we have learned there are going to play a very important role in this video. And if you are watching this video means you have a clear understanding of mean, median and mode. So by taking that into consideration, I am going to start this video. So here you can see some of the basic plots are plotted here. So for now, please don't focus on those basic plots. First, let us see what is variance. So here. I have written the same code for finding the mean. So I uh, discovered out the mean using the np.mean in our iris dataset of petal length as we have done previous. So as you can see here, we have already covered this topic of finding the mean. And once we found out the mean, we are also finding the standard deviation. So to understand the standard deviation, we should first understand the variance. So what is variance? So, so if you try to explain variance, variance is just the measure of distance between the two given points. So let me show you. So let us suppose that uh, we have find out the mean and uh, the mean here is 1.14. So let me simply draw a line and I know this is not a straight line but let us think that this is the mean and the mean here is 1.464. So this is our mean and if uh, there is some point here which is let's say 2.123 then the variance is basically the total distance between this point 1.4 and this point 2.123 so variance is nothing but the measure of spread between the two different points it means how much distance is between one point to another point so what will be the formula of variance so let me simply write it here So for uh, calculating variance, first of all, we have to just sum up all those elements. So for that, we are going to use this auto sum, which is going to sum from 1 to n. And then we are trying to find the distance between the mean. So this is basically the mean as we have seen that, that this is the mean and we are trying to find the distance from the mean. Means how much the point is basically getting spread from its mean. So for that, if uh, we suppose that this is our mean and we know that we represent mean as mu and suppose that this point is basically xi. So what will be the formula? So to measure the distance between the two points in this case, we can just basically subtract this xi and mu and we will get the dis distance. But as you know that if our xi is in this side, then we are going to get a negative distance but there is no negative distance and that is the reason why we are also going to square it out so the formula that is going to come up with is mu minus xi and we are going to square them because we don't want any negative distance and that is the reason why we are basically squaring them up and then it is basically the average of distance. So if it is average of distance, then we have to simply divide it by 1 upon n. So this is our basically the formula of variance. In variance, what we are basically trying to do in variance, we are basically trying to find the average distance between all of the points from its mean. So if uh, the one point is here xi and let us suppose that one other point is here x2 and it is like 1.01 .01. so we are basically trying to find the distance between the point like what distance does it have from here to here for this we are going to find for mu and x2 then we are to going to find the distance from mu to x1 and we are going to find it for every single point that we are having in our data set and then we are basically we are trying to find the average so if we are trying to read this in simple english then we can basically say that it is basically the squared distance average from the mean and that is what our variance is so if we just use the square root to our variance and let us suppose that this is our variance and then when we are going to square root our variance then the variance will look something like this it will be square root of the average of 
so this is basically taking the average average of the square distance so square distance can be written as mu minus x i squared so when we are going to write in this form this is basically going to imply that this is our standard deviation so when we are going to square root our variance it is basically nothing but our standard deviation and what does standard deviation basically tries to tell us that how much one point is far away from its mean so that is the use of standard deviation and now let us see why standard deviation is so important and to know why the standard deviation is so important let us see this example let me just delete it and so with the help of some of the basic python we can basically plot them but what if we don't have this plot because earlier days we don't have the plots and this technology to basically plot the data what people are do in earlier days so if we know the mean and standard deviation we can basically draw this plot by ourselves so let me explain you how we can do that so let us take our this example with the mean as 1.46 so i will take first draw a simple line and we can simply say that the mean is somewhat 1.46 and then the mean for this ir satosa which is 1.46 the standard deviation for this is 0.17 so here we can say that the ir satosha which is basically going to lie from this range so it will be here so here we can say that 1.46 minus 0.1717 and the numbers so this point will be in negative side because this is on the left and the number to the right will be here uh, and here uh, the number will be 1.46 plus 0.1717 and with the help of this we can see that the satosa is not hard, uh, widely spread as that of our petal of as that of our uh, color and virginica so with the help of this we can basically draw a plot so with the help of this we can simply draw a plot like this and then we can just move on to the next point that is 5.52 so now let us suppose that the next point here it is having the mean of 5.52 and then here we can see the spread is 0.5 so this point is basically going to lie somewhere here which will be 5.52 plus 0.56546 or the number like that and here it will also lie somewhere here and it will be 5.52 plus okay let me just undo it it will be negative sign because when we are going left it is basically in negative so we are basically going to subtract 0.54 so with the help of mean and standard deviation we can simply plot this so we can simply plot this diagram and we can see here that our spread okay pardon me for bad drawing but you get the idea so here we can see that our spread is less so here our the distance between this spread is small because here our standard deviation is also small and here we can see that the spread is much higher as compared to our satosha so this is basically our satosha and this is basically our virginica so here we can see that the satosa have the less spread and virginica have the higher spread so with the help of these two we can basically extract much information by just seeing at the mean and the variance or standard deviation and we can simply draw this plot that we are basically seeing here that we draw using seaborn well this plot is following the bell curve as you can see that it just look it just looks somewhat like the shape of our bell so here we can see that this is also looking the same and this is also looking the same it is like bell curve which and this is most popular in probability and statistics and we are going to take a look at them and this is basically our bell curve which is also known as normal distribution or gaussian distribution and by just looking at this plot we can extract much 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 information about the particular given data with just our mean and standard deviation so this is why the mean and standard deviation are so important topics in our data science and in statistics in general so once we will learn our normal distribution 
there we are going to see how much important role that this distributions play like just by looking at this data we can say that what is the probability of data that is going to be somewhat here so here we can say that if uh, we ask the probability of data point going to be here we can simply calculate it just by using the mean and mode and that is the video that is going to come up next with where we are going to discuss about the bell curve or normal distribution or gaussian distribution it has so many names and it is so important distribution so it is the most important distribution and we are going to discuss it in great detail in our upcoming video so please make sure to subscribe to our channel and now let us just move on to how we are going to implement this standard deviation because once we are just going to implement this in our own language or in our own codes then we can get a very clear understanding about the what is happening inside our standard deviation so let me just clear it out so now let us see how this standard deviation is basically implemented using code because once we see how these things are basically connected using code then and only then we can get the better and the clear understanding so in this example i took basically three data points uh, which are just simple one two and three so if you remember the formula of standard deviation it is basically the under root of one upon n summation over i equal to one to n and then we are basically squaring the distance which is basically xi minus mu squared so the first thing that we are doing here we just need mu so mu is nothing but mean so mu is basically x so let me just so mu is basically our mean and then we have x i so what are x i x i are just this data point so this is one x i this is one x i this is another x i so the first thing that we are doing is to just find this difference so here using this logic x i minus mu is square so we are basically finding the square and we are basically summing them up and once we uh, find the sum of all these function we are basically dividing it by one upon n so to divide it by one upon n the we just wrote std is equal to the sum this sum is basically s and then we are just dividing by total number of elements that are three and when we got this so till now we have just got this so now only thing that is left is to just find a square root and with the help of python in our math library we have square root function and with the help of that square root function we can just simply find the square root of the given number and we can simply print it there so this was it for this video and i hope that you have learned something new from this video and you have got very clear understanding about this topic and if you did so please make sure to subscribe to our channel and like our video and please do not forget to comment or ask any doubt that you have